What's good, everybody? Welcome to yet another episode of Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. Thank you for joining me today. This is episode 14 of Hockey on the Spot, and for today, we are going to continue the 30 teams in 30 days for the entire month of August, and for today, we are going to talk about the Nashville Predators. And for the Nashville Predators, after making it to the playoffs three straight seasons and seven of the last eight seasons, very, very disappointing year. It was their worst season in a very long time. They finished second to last place in the Western Conference. That's 14th in the Western Conference with 41 points. Um, only the Colorado Avalanche had less points in the West than the Nashville Predators. And in the overall league, they were 26th in the league. They were the fourth worst team in the entire league. Um, only the Florida Panthers, Colorado Avalanche, and Tampa Bay Lightning finished with worse records than the Nashville Predators. So, um, very, very disappointing year. A year where Shea Weber would be the team's leading point scorer with 28 points, but 99 other players in the league, including his former teammate Ryan Suter, now of the Minnesota Wild, had more points than him. And their leading goal scorer, David Legwand, who had 12 goals, which is not a lot at all. And only two other guys scored double-digit goals last year for Nashville. Gabriel Bork with 11 and Mike Fisher with 10. So um, definitely an offseason that needed to make some changes. So um, very busy offseason for the Nashville Predators. This wasn't a team that really needed to go through a complete rebuild but they definitely needed to get rid of some guys and bring in some guys to replace them to get forwards and defensemen that could back up Pecorine. And Pe it was because of the poor play of the offense and the defense that made Pecorine look, like a, look worse than he really was last year. His goals against average and save percentage were still as remarkable as ever, but it was just in the wins category where we didn't see as much as we were used to seeing. Last year, a record of 15-16-1, and one, an under 500 record. And Chris Mason, who was the backup goaltender last year, he did not help the cause that, that much. He is gone now. He signed in Italy, believe it or not. Um, so that was one key for the Nashville Predators to get a backup goalie this year to re replace Chris Mason. Um but for the Nashville Predators, also one thing of interest, for a team that is normally one of the best as far as penalty killing goes, last year, big, big mistake, um, big, big, big disappointment on the penalty kill. They finished the year 75.5% on the penalty kill. That was 29th in the league on the penalty kill, which is not Nashville Predators-like numbers on the penalty kill considering the kind of defensive team that they are and that they have been since day one. But for this offseason, changes need to be made. Lots of changes need to be made. Um, for one, Sergei Kostitsin, who was the team's leading scorer a couple years ago, he is gone, especially after that mistake he made against the Edmonton Oilers that one night where he went to the bench while the puck was still loose and the Oilers scored off that. That was one of the reasons why Sergei did not return to um, Nashville this year. He signs in the KHL to, sign, to join his older brother, Andre. Um, Brandon Yip is gone as well. He goes and signs with the Phoenix Coyotes. Um, Matt Halischuk, probably one of the bigger losses for Nashville this year, a player who had been pretty consistent in Nashville. He is now a member of the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, defenseman Hal Gill would be waived by the team and have the last year of his contract bought out. So he is still he is still a free agent. No one has signed him yet, but he will not be returning to Nashville. Uh, Bobby Butler also gone. He signed with the Florida Panthers. Chris Mueller gone, signing with the Dallas Stars. And Jonathan Blum is gone. He signs with the Minnesota Wild. Overall, the biggest loss for the team, probably the least intended, 
in my opinion, probably Matt Halischuk going to the Winnipeg Jets. He's a guy who was a pretty popular player in Nashville, and he's going to be missed very much. But with these departures, they were so so really mostly depth players go going. The only score going is Sergei Kostitsin, but that one was intentional. So um, he will not be back in Nashville. However. <laughs> They did make a lot of additions this offseason as well. They didn't have as many additions as subtractions, but definitely areas that they needed to fill. You know, like for one example being the situation in goal, the position of backup goaltender. They signed former prospect goaltender Carter Hutton coming over from the Chicago Blackhawks, a former prospect of theirs. But with the way things were going in Chicago with the things in goal, everything in goal with Corey Crawford and Ray Emery and now Nikolai Javi Bulin and now Antti Ranta as well. Um, they, there was no room for Carter Hutton to stay in the prospect system for the Chicago Blackhawks. He now joins the Nashville Predators where he will most likely be the backup goaltender replacing Chris Mason uh, for Pekka Rene this year. They also bring in Brian Rodney, a, de a defenseman, believe coming over from the Edmonton Oilers a guy who will de a, a good guy who they could call up if they if a bunch of their defensemen start getting hurt um, more of an eighth ninth guy though so that one's not of importance but now let's get to some of the bigger signings by the Nashville Predators they definitely get themselves a lot faster this year um, they bring in Matt veteran center Matt Cullen coming over from the Minnesota Wild um, guy who could definitely provide some depth for them, and a guy who can be, who will most likely begin the year on the third line. But at some point, if he pr starts producing well, and David Legwan has a setback year, could move up to the second line spot. So, Matt Cullen, an excellent two-way forward at his age, still, and a good playmaker as well. They also bring in uh, Victor Stahlberg coming over from the Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks. He won the Cup with the Hawks last year. Played a bit, played a pretty big role for them in, during the regular season. In the playoffs, he only had three assists, but those that nineteen that nineteen games of experience and just winning the Cup is going to bring an excellent presence to Nashville, despite the fact that he is still a young kid. Um, but he's a definitely a fast player with an excellent shot. So I think that's a good addition for Nashville. And they also get a lot grittier, too, which they needed. They bring in Eric Nystrom from the Dallas Stars, a guy who actually had a pretty solid career in Dallas, even though they didn't make the playoffs. He did some pretty good things for them. And again, the son of Bobby Nystrom, um... A, guy, a big grit guy, um, a hard-working player for sure. Um, I think a guy who could definitely fit the Nashville system well and bring an aspect to their team that was left behind when Jordan Tutu left the team. Much better pl overall player than Jordan Tutu, though. Um, they, and they also bring in Matt Hendricks coming over from the Washington Capitals, another guy who plays naturally plays wing but could play center um but again we'll probably play wing in Nashville and another guy who brought a good dimension to the Washington Capitals system became a very popular player there um and is a guy who could potentially become just that in Nashville so the two grit guys they bring in Eric Nystrom and Matt Hendricks definitely add a whole new dimension to this team and then you got the speed guys in Victor Stahlberg and veteran Matt Cullen who add a lot of depth and a good and solid scoring ability to this team so I think they're definitely look a lot better this year but only time will tell if they are a playoff team but again the move that really stood out this offseason for the Nashville Predators because they were the fourth worst team in the NHL, they were rewarded the fourth overall pick in the 2013 NHL entry draft. And they could not believe what they witnessed when they saw Portland Winterhawks defenseman Seth Jones fall the fourth overall. A guy who many believed was a top 
pick, actually, and a lot of people believe that the Colorado Avalanche were going to take him number one overall, but when they chose not to, that really took David Poyle by surprise. They took Nathan McKinnon. The Florida Panthers, a team that could have used defense, they decided to go with Alexander Barkov. And then the Tampa Bay Lightning, they weren't ne not going to take Seth Jones regardless. They were big Jonathan Drouin fans from the beginning, so they took him. So David Poyle was just an absolute shock when Seth Jones fell to fourth overall, and they wasted no time. This is basically their future replacement to Ryan Suter. This is a player who might even be better in the future than Ryan Suter. Much better ability to score, um, and a much bigger player than my, Ryan Suter for sure. Um, and they wasted no time to sign him to a three-year entry-level contract. So, right now, looking at their defense, their defense is absolutely stoked, um, uh, stacked, I should say. Um, they got Roman Yossi signed up long-term. They signed him to a seven-year contract. They signed P forward Patrick Hornquist to a five-year extension, and they signed forward Richard Clune to a two-year extension. Richard Clune led the team with 159 hits last season. He was among the league leaders as well. So they get their physical presence, keep their physical presence now. But now, despite the fact that Richard Clune and Gabriel Bork bro both had breakout years last year, Clune with his physicality and Bork with his goal scoring, um, because of the additions that they did make, there really is no room on the roster, at least in the top 12, to really make these guys regulars. Um, they got, you know, Patrick Hornquist, Mike Fisher, Colin Wilson's going to be back healthy. Um, Philip Forsberg, he's ready to play in the NHL um, full-time. David Leguan, Victor Stahlberg, uh, Matt Cullen, Craig Smith, um, Nick Spalling. Those would really be the two guys that could fall out at some point, Craig Smith or Nick Spalling, but I doubt that'll happen. Um, and then Paul Gostad, Matt Hendricks, and Eric Nystrom. That's a good-looking fourth line right there um, with Hendricks and Nystrom on the wing, and then Paul Gostad, a big guy at center. Gabriel Bork and Richard Clune will probably have to settle at least to begin the year as both the 13th and 14th forwards. Um, and then... On defense, it's really not as much of an issue. We know who their top five guys are going to be. Shea Weber, Roman Yossi, Seth Jones, Kevin Klein, and Ryan Ellis. Those are their top five guys. Ryan Ellis, a guy who they're hoping will have a breakout year this year. Then they have that sixth spot on defense. They got two guys with Hal Gill gone. They now have two players who could be ready to make the next, take the next step. Um, they have... There's, they have one guy in Victor Bartley who played quite a bit last year and played and actually played pretty well. However, in all intensive purposes, Matthias Ekholm will probably be the sixth guy. He was their top prospect last year and is pretty much a similar type player to Seth Jones, and he has a great future ahead of him. So they, the Nashville Predators' future is definitely looking bright. Um and this is really, and really the big questions for the Nashville Predators are, are their youngsters going to produce right away? Philip Forsberg, Seth Jones, and Matthias Ekholm are the guys that they're really looking at here. Um, maybe one, maybe Austin Watson plays at some point, and if he plays, can he be a factor? Can Colin Wilson get back in healthy? Remembering Colin Wilson at the beginning of the year was actually the team's best player. He was having a breakout year. But then 25 games into the year, he suffers a season-ending injury. And that hopefully will not take a toll on him. But they're hoping he can get back in and healthy. Um, so, um, honestly, I think the kids are going to look fine. Um, yeah, I, th I actually do think they'll have a good development year. But the real question for me now is can they score? Can their forwards, can their offense provide goal scoring for them. That's really the key. This has always been a defensive-minded team. They've never been a big scoring team, with the exception of the 06-07 season, when they had like six different guys on the team who had 20 or more goals. That was their best offensive season, but they have not had another season like that since. Um, Paul Correa is not there anymore. Um, so... 
yeah, JP Dumont's not there anymore. Um, and even if they were, both of them were not in their prime, would not be in their prime by this point. So, you know, it, that really, those are the big questions for Nashville, in my opinion. And also, can Pecorine continue to have another stellar year? He had to have hip surgery this offseason. So can he have a stellar year? And if not, can a guy like Carter Hutton, another youngster, <clears throat> can he fill well as a solid backup goaltender, maybe even starter, if Rene does get hurt? Those are the big questions for Nashville, in my opinion. Um, for But looking at their forward core, for me, I like their depth on the wings. The problem for me is at center. Mike Fisher, let's face it, he's not a top-line center. He's more of a second-line guy. And David Legwand, he never really did live up to his draft expectations. Uh, more of a third-line guy. And then Matt Cullen could be either or. So that's really where the, the issue lies. They really don't have a top-line center, which kind of is the reason why I'm a little shocked that they're maybe not going after a guy like Mikhail Grabowski. Um, they're not joining the Mikhail Grabowski sweeps. But it is what it is. Um, hopefully they can get a top-line center for next season or at the trade deadline or something. All right, now let us take a look at the top prospects for the Nashville Predators. For the Nashville Predators, they are stacked at, with their top 10 prospects. This, because they had such a bad year or last year, they were able to get themselves stacked for their top 10 prospects. Way better looking than the Minnesota Wild, that's for sure. Um, I'd say along the level of the Dallas Stars, probably. Um, not as good as the Chicago Blackhawks. Um, and probably a little better than the Colorado Avalanche. Um, or no, actually, I'd say along the level of the Colorado Avalanche, probably around the same as the Avs, a little better than the Dallas Stars, way better than the Minnesota Wild, not as good as the Chicago Blackhawks, though. So that's where they stand. Seth Jones, no question. He's their top prospect with Philip Forsberg being number two. That's a given. Austin Watson at number three. He could be ready to make the bi next big jump. And Matthias Eckholm at number four. So three of those four guys are definitely going to be playing this year. Austin Watson being the maybe. Uh, Colton Sisson's another guy who could surprise. But the one guy on this list, um, they got Magnus Hellberg too. But the one guy on this list that really impressed me was their number six prospect, left winger Brendan Leipzig. Brendan Leipzig was Seth Jones' teammate in the, with the Portland Winterhawks last year, and he led the entire Western Hockey League in scoring with 120 points, 49 goals. Very similar type player to a guy like Brad Marchand from the Boston Bruins. Um, that's what he's expected to be when he comes into the NHL. Small player, but a hard worker for sure. Um, so I think Nashville has a lot to look forward to with this kid from the Portland Winterhawks. Now, the player on the Nashville Predators, in my opinion, needs to step up in order for this team to get back into the playoffs. No question whatsoever has, has to be Colin Wilson. And why I say Colin Wilson, like, like I said, he had the breakout start to last year, and he looked like he was going to have a great year. But then 25 games into the year, he suffers a season-ending injury. And that leaves questions now. Can he get back into the form he was in in the first 25 games? In order for the Preds to be successful this year, he has to get back into that form. He needs to have a, a, an even better breakout year, and he needs to stay healthy. That's been a big issue for his career. He has not been able to stay healthy. He needs to stay healthy in order for the Preds to be successful this year. Overall, are the Nashville Predators a playoff team? Their forwards are okay, but I love their defense. I think they are absolutely stacked on defense, and I think, and of course, Pekka Rene, a very trustworthy goalie. So honestly, I'm going to say yes. I think the Nashville Predators will be back in the playoffs this year, despite development years. For Forsberg and Jones and Eckholm and possibly Carter Hutton as well. Um, I think they will be back in the playoffs this year. I think they are good enough to be back in the playoffs this year. Okay, guys, thank you for joining me. That is will do it for Hockey on the Spot. This has been episode 14. For join me tomorrow when we talk about the St. Louis Blues. So until then, this has been Hockey on the Spot with Brandon Barenfeld. I'm Brandon Barenfeld. 
So tune in next time. Thank you and have a great day.